Welcome to GED Math and Dirt News. In these tutorials, I will show you how to solve many of the GED math problems using the TI-30XS scientific calculator. Welcome to GED Math in 30 Days. I'm your host. My name is Jeremy Tinsley. I'm an adult educator out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I'm glad you tuned in because you have selected the, the correct YouTube channel to watch to pass your GED. I know there's a lot of other sites out there, a lot of good sites, but you found the YouTube channel that's going to help you pass your math exam within 30 days. Okay, so therefore, um, uh, make sure you uh, visit my site, uh, passgdmath.com. I have an incredible ebook where I go over how to solve the most difficult problems on the GED exam in less than one minute. Yeah, you heard, you heard it right. I'm showing you how to solve the hardest problems in less than one minute. Okay, some people take a minute to read the question. And I'm showing you how to solve a problem in less than one minute. So check out my site, passgdmath.com. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like, make sure you comment. And today, our topic is volume. Volume is just basically the capacity when something holds. That's the important word you need to know. A lot of times they might not ask you or tell you what the volume is. They'll say capacity, they'll say hold. So that's what you want to remember, volume. The capacity is something. How much something holds. There are several shapes that you need to be familiar with for the volume. As you see, I have the formula sheet open. Let me increase the zoom. Okay. If you notice on your formula sheet, there are it's in your second section. So you are responsible to know the volume of a rectangular prism, the volume of a cylinder, the volume of a pyramid the volume of a cone, and the volume of a sphere, okay? You need to know these formulas. You then need to, have to know how to use these formulas. Well, today, if you don't know, I'm going to show you how to do volume, okay? So first of all, let's look at some problems. Oops, let's go here. First of all, you have to be able to identify the, the, the shape. The 3D shape. So remember, what is volume? Okay, volume is three dimensions. So when we talked about area, we talked about base times height, okay, or length times width. If you notice, there's only two dimensions. When we talk about volume, it's three dimensions. So in terms of if you had an area of a rectangle, is length times width, the volume will be length times width times height. If you had a circle, the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, okay, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. So basically, the volume is just the area of the base times the height, okay? There are some um, um, certain uh, different, some exceptions. Uh, if we look at these first two examples, if you see them, they, when they come to the point, uh, the first one is a pyramid. So you got to be familiar with a pyramid. You have to be familiar with a cone. They almost always ask you the volume of a rectangular prism. They almost always have one of the other. So cone, uh, cylinder, or pyramid. And then they usually have either surface area or volume of a sphere. Okay, so let's look at it. So let's look at uh, the first uh, example where we have a pyramid. So we're going to go back to our formula sheet. And we have a pyramid. So the the volume for a pyramid oops, is one third B times H. What is B? This is very important. That's why a lot of people do not know how to use this formula sheet. The area of the base is what's meant by the variable, the capital B. So one third times the area of the base times the height. Okay, so let me clear the screen. And let's go to your volume. Okay, so first of all, you always want to start with our formula. One third 
base times height. What you should notice is that the base of this shape is a square. How do you find the area of the square? Four times four. So area of the base or capital B is 16. So now all we're going to do is take this formula and we're going to plug everything in. So always identify your gifts. Your height is 12. So we're just going to plug everything in. So again, listen, if you identify the formula, all we're doing is plugging in. So let's go let me save this. Let me open my calculator. So we're going to make this real easy. We move this over first. Okay, so let's we can erase, we'll bring it back. Uh, one third base times height. That's all we need is that formula. Okay, so let me move this actually up here. One third base times height. We also know the height is 12. And we know the area of the base, area equals length times width, which is meant by capital B, is four times four, which is four squared. So watch this. So we won't make any mistakes. What we're going to do is we're going to hit ND. We're going to do one third. We're going to hit our right arrow to get out of our fraction. Remember, one third base times height. So our base, again, we're going to put in parentheses to multiply. It's four times four, or four squared, multiplied by the height, which was 12. Okay, those are the, uh, the key presses that you can press on your calculator to do this problem. So you can go back and watch this video. You can pause it and then practice on your calculator. We'll press enter to get our answer, and our answer is 64. Okay, that's very important. Okay, so our answer was 64. I'm gonna clear the screen. And let's go back to our worksheet. So 64, and this is this is also very important. Your measurement is inches. So your volume, either they go inches to the third, remember I told you it's three dimensions, or you could say 64 cubic inches. Okay, this is how. Volume is always represented because it has three dimensions. So either uh, whatever the measure is to the third power or cubic, whatever it is to the third power. So again, let's look at number two. And we have what's called a cone. Cone. Again, let's go back to our formula sheet. Let's get our formulas. You want to be able to use the formula sheet is very, very important. You want to be able to use this formula sheet. Every time you practice math, you should pull out your calculator and your formula sheet. We know that volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. One third pi r squared h. So again, just grab our calculator, but we got to identify our givens first. So what we know is the height is 11. 11 inches. We know that the diameter is four inches. Well, our formula doesn't contain the diameter, but we know the radius is half of the diameter. So that's all our givens. We have the height, we have the diameter, and we have the radius. So now we're going to go to our calculator. Okay, let me clear. This is very important. This is very, very important for you to know. You have to be able to use your formula sheet. It will save you so much time and heartache. Okay? We also know that our formula is V equal one third pi r squared h. So we're going to put it right into our calculator exactly the way you see it. So one third times pi, as you should know, pi is 3.14. R squared, so 2 squared, times the height, which is 11. Okay, we're enclosing the parentheses to indicate multiplication. We're going to press our enter. So if you notice, our answer is 46.05. Now, 
the test might ask you to round off to the nearest tenth. It might ask you to round off to the nearest whole number. Guess what? If you didn't watch my uh, video on rounding, I'm going to show you how to round. So if we want to round this to the nearest tenth, we can hit mode, go down to float, and we're going to change our decimal places. We want to show one decimal place, then press enter. So if we had to round it off to the nearest tenth, our answer would be 46.1. If we wanted to round off to the nearest whole number, again, we we'll go to mode, go down to float, and we don't want any decimal places. So we're going to go to zero and press enter. Round it off will be 46. Okay, so we got our answer. We rounded it, round it off to the tenth. We round up to the nearest whole number. But one thing you want to do, you want to make sure once you um, are finished rounding off, you got to take go back to your display mode and go back to flu. So it'll show all your decimal places. Okay, there you go. All right, good. Very good. All right, let's clear the screen. Let me clear my calculator. Let's go back to another example. Okay, let's do a cylinder. Okay, so you want to be you want to be prepared to answer problems like one, two, four, six. Definitely six. That's a rectangular prism. That's a cube. Okay, so we go the next one you should be fairly familiar with is a cylinder. Okay, so I have to know all of your shapes. So let's go to our formula sheet. We're gonna get our formula for a the volume of a cylinder, and it's pi r squared h. Remember, your formula sheet and your calculator will be your best friend. Okay, will be your best friend. If you listen to, to my videos and listen to what I'm saying. You're almost sure to pass your GED math test in 30 days. Okay. Now, if you buy my ebook, I'll show you, I'll, sh I'll, I'll demonstrate all of these for even quadratic equations, linear equations, system of equations, all the harder type problems. I'll show you how to do it on the calculator in less than less than a minute. So make sure you uh, wait to the end of this video and you'll be able to see how much it costs in the discount code um, of the purchase the ebook. Cylinder pi r squared h. Let's go back to our formula. Go back to our problem. Volume equal pi r squared h. Okay, so we know the height is 12. Okay, from one side through the center to the other side, our diameter is 8. Our formula does not contain, does not contain the diameter. So we have to figure out what the radius is, the radius is half of the diameter. Okay, so now we know our radius is four, we know our height is 12. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our calculator, again, using the formula on the formula sheet. I cannot stress it enough, okay? So again, pi r squared h, so 3.14, our r was four, square it, our height was 12. This now becomes an easy problem, 602.88. A very easy problem, okay, 602.88. Again, now, if you want to round off um, manually, 602.88. If you want to round off to nearest tenth place, the first eight is in the tenth place. Look at the number to the right. If that's five or above, that number goes up. So if we want to round it off to the nearest tenth without the calculator, be 602.9. If we want to round off to the nearest whole number, again, we go to the ones place, look at the number to the right, that's five or above, that goes up. So round off to the nearest whole number would be 603. Okay, so let me show you fairly quickly on the calculator, mode, float, one decimal place, enter, 602.9. If I want to round off to this whole number, mode, Go down to float, go over to zero, press enter. You want to quit the display mode, so second in mode, press enter, 603. And now again, to go back to regular display mode, mode, and come down to float and press enter. Okay, so I go over all of these shortcuts in my ebook. Okay, everyone that has used the ebook as of today 
as of as the, as the filming of this video, everyone has, who has used the ebook has passed their exam. Okay, so make sure you uh, uh, go to my site, passgdmath.com. Okay, let me clear the screen. Let me clear my calculator. And let's do one last example for volume. I'm going to do a rectangular prism. Okay, very easy. We know the volume is base times height or length times width times height. Very easy, eight times 14 times six. Okay, well, I don't like to use uh, uh, the, the X's as multiplication. So let me erase that and let me use my parentheses. Eight, oh, so we look at the base. That's 14 times six. We look at the height, which is eight. Okay, we grab our calculator. We don't want to make mistakes. So grab your calculator. 14 times six times eight. Press enter, 672. Now it's very important for you to know, even though it's 672, it's very important for you to know. This answer is 600. Did I say 72? I think I did 672 yards to the third power or 672 cubic yards. Okay, got to make sure you, you have the proper uh, measurement for volume, which is either to the third power because it's three dimensions or cubic, which means three. Okay. Uh, that is your lesson for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you. Okay, if it helped you, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure you like and make sure you comment and make sure you let me know if I helped you pass your GED math exam. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.